I've been in this devotional series looking at the Apostles' Creed, or maybe more accurately accurately looking at the passages that inspired uh, the Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit. And, and today we've gotten to uh, the phrase that says that I believe that uh, Jesus sits at the right hand and from the right hand of God, and from there... Uh, he will come to judge the living and the dead. You know, what what does that mean? I'm going to read a couple of passages that have inspired this statement, and we'll we'll look a little bit uh, as to the meaning of it, but but maybe more importantly, the application of it, the why it's important. Um, let me read from the Revelation uh, chapter one. I mean, there we see a vision of Christ returning on the on the clouds. Revelation one verse seven. Look, he is coming with clouds. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. And that's more of the, the classic image we have of Jesus coming in judgment in a way that inspires fear um, and mourning. Um, what do we do in response to that? And I'm going to read something from Paul's letter to his apprentice Timothy, talking about being prepared and and his exhortation uh, to to his disciple. This is in Second Timothy chapter four. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge: preach the word. Be prepared. In season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers who say what their itching ears want them to hear. Well, that's a familiar um, idea. A lot of times we just don't like to hear what we don't want to hear, so we surround our people ourselves with people who will say exactly what we want to hear. And that's exactly what we shouldn't do. We need hard truths, but we need more than hard truths. We need mercy. Now, when we think about judgment, it's, it's an idea that we all live with, whether we like it or not, and we react to it. Um, either positively or negatively or fearfully. Uh, maybe we say, well, a loving God wouldn't judge, ju or judgment is just a way of controlling people through fear. Some of us uh, like the idea of judgment because, boy, we've had it with these wicked people. Bring it on, God. I want the wicked to be dealt with. Um, those of us that are maybe a little bit more self-reflective uh, are wondering, well, has the good in my life outweighed the bad? We, we certainly hope so, but maybe we're uncertain about that. Uh, maybe if we just don't think about it, it'll all go away. But here's the thing. Uh, no matter how much we put it off, a time of reckoning comes. Uh, I, I deal with it too. Um, uh, this issue of time it is now the right time. Maybe I can think of it tomorrow, and I, I, I put thing put things off uh, for for one of just dealing with what's right in front of me. And some people would even say that's the right way to look at life. Carpe diem, all you have is today, uh, and there is no tomorrow. I don't know that that results in necessarily the best character of life, but um, but there is a point. You know, we're not promised tomorrow. I don't mean to be morbid about it. Or endorse carpe diem, um, but this idea of reckoning, the idea that we will be assessed, that we will be judged, uh, brings into the into relief the things we put off, the things we say. I'll have time next week or next year when I retire, and it's particularly tragic when we put off what we put off as a reckoning with this idea of uh, of judgment. Um, uh, you know, maybe I'm not living as I should, but I'll worry about that later. You know, Augustine, as he mused about his attitude in his youth, described it this way. He, he would say in his youth, or he mockingly would describe his youth this way, Lord, make me chaste and celibate, but not yet. 
Uh, the affirmation of the creed tells us that there will be a reckoning. At some point, it will come, uh, it will all come to an end. Are we prepared? Do we know what it means to be prepared? Jesus is coming to settle accounts. So he says, prepare yourself. And the way we prepare ourselves is in his mercy. This is the thing. Jesus is the one who comes as judge. And this is a fascinating truth because Jesus, he's not like our accusers. He's not like Satan who wants to see our destruction. Jesus, the great judge, is also our savior. How do we prepare? We might say, well, we need to do all these good things. But the thing is, we can't. We can't do enough to outweigh all that we've done wrong or the things that cascade out from our failures. There's only mercy. And thank the Lord that the one who is the judge is also the one who gave himself mercifully to redeem us. So we don't need to fear judgment. The one who loves us is our judge. And when we put our trust in him, he's covered our failings. There is a judgment. We need to prepare for it, but the way we prepare for it is by resting in his mercy and letting that shape our lives. Don't put that off. Don't say, ah, next week I have a little bit more to do. The way I want to do things, I'll get to it eventually. No. Uh, deal with it today. And experience the blessing of having that mercy shape your life from here on out. Blessings on you all.